Tonight, Google I.O. gives developers more hands-on time. GoPro's IPO is off to a good start. And going to space in a balloon. It's not far off. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 117 for Thursday, June 26th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,400 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN number two. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the top story. And joining me, as promised, is Gina Trapani, the other host of This Week in Google. We had Jeff Jarvis yesterday and Gina Trapani today. Hey, Gina. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I know that you are uh, Skyping in from your hotel that's near Google I.O. You've spent a lot of time on the floor today. So what's, what, what, you know, you've got some hands-on time. What did you think of the Android L preview for developers? Oh, yes, Android L preview. The images came out today, and I'm so sad that my, like, Nexus 7 and Nexus 5 are not here because I wanted to install it <laughs> right away. Um, I re honestly cannot wait to uh, to really get time with that. And you really don't get time with it unless it's, like, you know, on your own device, really. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited about it, but particularly the material design stuff. I just think it looks so nice. And uh, I obviously, I'm a developer. I can't wait to see what my app looks like in material design, both anticipate, greatly anticipating and, and also a little worried. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll allow to be a smooth transition. Is, is, um, was there anything specifically, since you are a developer, uh, on the Android side that you were, they were hoping would change that, that looks like it has or that will? you know, I just want Android to get a better, you know, reputation around design. And I think that it really has kind of really since Jelly Bean, um, you know, it, 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 it stopped being like the ugly OS, but I felt like there was still more that could happen. And just seeing, you know, the, the little, the responsiveness and the speed and the, and the sort of natural, natural part of the material design stuff, it, it made me, it feels like it kind of went that last mile. Now, finally, Android is like what it, what it always could have been. It no, no longer looks like, you know, that the, the open source, uh, you know, we'll fix it later operating system, right? Like this is polished and smooth. I'm excited about that. And, and as a developer, I get a lot of these upgrades just for free, right? Because this, this is like, this is going to be the new default theme in L. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it looks beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, uh, you showed me uh, your watch before we started the show. Which one did you get? This was a, this was a gift, right? You got to choose one. Yes, I did. We had the choice of the uh, the Gear Live, the Samsung Gear Live, or the uh, LG G Watch, and I went with the G Watch. And uh, this is what I've been playing with really all day. I, I put it on this morning. I've had it on all day, walking around San Francisco and, and Moscone. And, you know, in short, it, to, in my opinion, I think the current hardware is atrocious and the software is delightful. <laughs> now, so, I don't think it looks so bad. You just, you just, you're not a fan just, of the way it looks on your wrist? I mean, I this this thing just it looks kind of cheap and flimsy. The uh, band is sort of rubbery. I still think it sort of screams, you know, like super nerd. The bevel's really thick. I mean, it's really kind of like the beginning of of smartphones. I think that the hardware can do a lot better. I think the Moto 360 is going to be is definitely going to be a huge improvement. Um, this is really early for the hardware. I love the software, so I'm going to wear it. But I, I don't think it's the, and, and of course style is subjective, but I don't think it's the most stylish watch in the world. So I look forward to uh, new hardware iterations. Well, speaking, Android, or go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I was going to say Android Wear is awesome. I think the implementation is amazing. I love it. I love playing with it. I, it was very natural. I took to it very quickly. I love getting notifications on my phone. Um, I'm a smart watch noob. This is my first smart watch and it just makes sense. I really like it a lot. Well, on the software side, I know you and your co-host, Jason Howell, on All About Android, got a chance to check out Android Auto, which is supposed to make uh, using Android in your car more seamless. What did you think? What's your takeaway from what you've seen so far? Yeah, I liked Android Auto, Auto a lot. Uh, Jason and I got to sit not in an actual moving car, but in a in a sort of in a prototype car on the floor in Moscone. And um, I got to watch, you know, a Googler plugged in 
plugged in an Android phone and showed me what Android, showed us what Android Auto looks like. And, you know, it's really just a head. I mean, it's just kind of a dumb terminal. You know, you plug in and everything's happening really on your phone, but it's, it's, it's an Android UI for the car. And in fact, I uploaded my Google Plus a couple of pictures of, of that demo and a couple of videos of that demo that, that Jason and I got. And uh, I like it a lot. It makes a ton of sense. I mean, for anybody who mounts their, their phone to their windshield, you know, this is just, this is that, but much, much better optimized for, for the car. So uh, it made a lot of sense. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not a huge car person, but I was like, yes, this, of course, this makes sense. This is exactly what I want in my car. In other Google product news, Jeff and I talked yesterday about how there was really no mention of Google Glass, although there have been a lot of updates as of late. Also, Google Plus seemed to be barely mentioned. I noticed uh, at Search Engine Land today, uh, they were noticed that certain things have been stripped out of Google Plus results. If you search for something uh, in Google and someone that's in one of your circles on Google Plus has written about it, no more profile pictures or the number of circles that they're in. What do you think is the deal with Google? I mean, is that purely a design streamline or is there some sort of de-emphasizing thing going on? I mean, I think Google is always, always, always experimenting with the search results and always checking on, you know, what people are clicking on and and, and making changes and iterating. Uh, but... I do think there is a de-emphasis going on. I'm probably the, the less, the least bullish of anyone on, on this week in Google about Google Plus, the social network. Um, and so I, I was thinking today about how Circles was such a huge announcement at Google I.O. just a few years ago, and we haven't heard the word Circles uh, from Googlers in a, in a while. So I do, I do think there's a de-emphasis going on uh, of the social network. Although I, I love Google Plus photos, uh, the auto awesome stuff, Hangouts are great. You didn't hear a whole lot about that either. So. Um, on the other hand, you know, like I said, Google's always tweaking their search results uh, to see what what you know the, the user feedback is like. So it might be just you know them trying trying things out, seeing what happens. Maybe it wasn't as useful as they thought it would be. I know that there are sessions. You mentioned there are sessions still probably going on at this hour at four o'clock um, on Thursday. It's kind of the developer day. What was your main takeaway from from what you got today? Yesterday was, you know, keynotes and spectacles and 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 a lot of questions being answered. But as a developer, what was what was really the mood of today? I mean, people people are excited. Moscone's packed. I I I posted a picture on my Google Plus of of uh, just just the you know I called it the nerd herd in a loving way uh, <laughs> at Moscone. It was packed. People are excited. The floor is busy. People are looking. I mean, of course, today the World Cup was going on, so there are quite a few people <laughs> watching the match. Um, but I think people are really excited. I I really feel like. Android's really coming to its own and, and the Android Chrome marriage are really, we're starting to see. And, you know, the Play Store has the numbers and the revenue is up. And I think that there's definitely a sense of excitement and legitimacy to, to, to Android and, and Chrome that's, that they've never had before. So I think that people are, people are excited. This was, a, this was a great I.O. for me, I think. Well, Jane and Trapani, thank you so much for being with us and joining us after a couple of really long days at Google I.O., which I know is across the country from where you usually are. Jane, of course, is the co-host of This Week in Google with Jeff Jarvis and our very own Leo Laporte on Wednesdays. They start around 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And Gina, as a developer, tell people where they can find out more about your other job. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> we can see everything I'm up to, uh, ginatrapani.org. Uh, my day job is building an app called ThinkUp. You should check it out at thinkup.com. It's social social networking analytics for, for humans. And it was so great to be here on Tech News tonight. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. And have a good one. You too. Thanks. All right. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. If you want to learn how to create and build responsive websites... I'd love to do that. I have no skill at all in that arena. Launch your own blog with WordPress. I've never used it, have you? It's daunting, huh? Create a graceful user experience for your site. All of those things are possible with a lynda.com subscription. The company offers thousands of online video courses and software and creative and business skills across a ton of subjects. With a subscription, you receive unlimited access to the entire course library. And lynda.com works with software companies to give you updated training, even the same day that new versions of software hit the market. So you always have the latest and greatest skills. The experts are at the top of their game and all of the courses are produced at very high quality. These aren't 
crappy videos. These are really, really nice ones. If you have just a few minutes, you can certainly learn something. Or if you have a whole week or a few hours, you can learn at your own pace on your own terms. Lynda.com is only $25 a month for access to the entire course library. Or for $37.50 per month, you can subscribe to the premium plan. They'll throw in exercise files as well. And you can try Lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. A whole week for free of Lynda courses. Visit lynda.com slash tn2 and access the entire library. That's not 100. That's not 500. That's 2,400 courses Completely free with no restrictions for seven days. That's lynda.com slash tn2. And thanks to lynda.com for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. All right, straight into the rest of our tech feed. GoPro had its initial public offering today, set at $24 per share. And it went pretty well. The stock peaked at $33 per share at one point today before settling in at about 31. That's up over 29% since it's open. GoPro's revenue and profits fell in its most recent quarter, but that hasn't seemed to deter investors from betting on its future as a public company. Microsoft Skype for Windows Phone 8.1 got an update today with full Cortana support, or do you say Cortana? It's almost like a Trapani Trapani, which will allow users to initiate voice or video calls without opening the Skype app, something like Skype call Leo Laporte or video chat with Leo Laporte using Cortana's voice control. Microsoft has opened up Cortana integration to third parties as well, so other apps will also be able to bake this functionality in the coming months. Other improvements to the app include editing a last sent message and increased language support from 19 to 51 languages. The German government has announced it will end its network contract with Verizon Communications next year due to NSA surveillance. In a statement today, the Interior Ministry explains that the, quote, relationships between foreign intelligence services and companies revealed during the NSA affair mean that the government needs to beef up security standards to its communications infrastructure. Going forward, German law requires telecommunications providers to sign new contracts confirming they're not legally obligated to share information with foreign governments. Verizon provided data on the phone use of millions of customers to the NSA under a court order the Obama administration confirmed in June of last year. The company's current contract with Germany expires in 2015. The iPod might be a little long in the tooth, but it's also getting cheaper. Apple has launched a new entry-level 16-gigabyte 5th-gen iPod Touch for $199. It's available in six different colors and features a rear camera. It also replaces the camera-less iPod model in the lineup that was priced at $229. The company also cut the price on the current 32-gig model to $249 and the 64-gig model to $299. The Watch ESPN app and accompanying website has had kind of a heavy load during the U.S. versus Germany World Cup match today. A lot of interest, obviously, in the U.S. It hit a record of 1.7 million concurrent viewers during the second half. It appears that soccer, or football, as you might call it, is very popular off ESPN as well. A Univision spokesperson tells TechCrunch that the Univision digital app broke records today, delivering 750,000 live concurrent streams for that same match. Finally, a company called Worldview wants you to travel to space in a balloon and had its first successful complete test this week, sending a balloon 120,000 feet in the air and back to landing. Now, nobody was in it yet, but Worldview's next big test is to send up a complete balloon with a metal weight at the bottom to make sure that the capsule could theoretically also hold eight passengers during the flight. Worldview CEO Jane Pointer hopes to have this next major test take place sometime next year, and the company hopes to send up actual passengers by 2016. If that sounds like something you would never do, the company says passengers have already booked seats on the plan 2016 launches. It's $750 or $75,000, although that's still a lot uh, per person per flight, and meant to last two hours and float a passenger up to 100,000 feet above ground. Something I will never, ever do. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight, but you should please go 
be my guest. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. That'll be tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.